image lab is open so let's go ahead and open up a gel file and so here we go and so this right here uh, is from last year so the data will look different than what you have uh, so one thing I'm going to do first is let's crop this gel so we don't need anything up here we don't need anything down there so let's get rid of some of that stuff so we go to image tools over here to the left and then crop and just go ahead and move that box and we, we need to see is we need to see the wells okay because that's where it started and we need to see any kind of bright brightishness all right so down here we don't need to see this we don't need to see the image the edges so I'm gonna go ahead and right click crop and now we've got that so let's make this a little bit bigger to analyze now these red uh, saturation pixels is telling us that that's saturated there uh, maybe your image will not have that hopefully it does not so so the first things we need to do is we need to go ahead and if you want to you can change the the contrast and so uh, you, you just using the slider layers what you don't want to do is you don't want to do something like that because what you've just done is you've hidden these line these bands right here right so let's not hide bands and, and likewise that's not good so find some you know auto scale often works pretty well but if you're looking at this and you're like I really want to see that uh, then you can go ahead and play with a little bit more to make sure you see it. So in this case, this works fine for me. So I'm going to X out of that. So now to analyze the gel, let's go to lane and bands over here on the left. So click on that. And then let's just go ahead and do lanes automatic. And so right there, it understands because it knows what's going on here. It's detecting all this it determined that there's probably 10 lanes here. Even with this stuff over here, it didn't consider that a lane. And so I look at this and I think that looks perfect, okay? If you need to adjust it, that's what this is. All lanes are over here and down here is the single lane. So for example, if, if things were a little bit uh, out of whack, we, could, we can go ahead and move things however we need to, right? And this one already has this curved a little bit to the left whereas this looks straight so if you needed to for example bend a single lane you could choose this and then you could bend it however you need to bend it okay so uh, so or you can do uh, manual lanes and so for example uh, enter number of lanes for example you're you've got eight right and so for example if we hit OK and it'll exist delete existing lanes yes so now there's eight, but of course there's more lanes than that on this gel. So I'm just kind of showing you how you can kind of manipulate that. So right there, that is a, a bona fide one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight lanes. Um, and what you can see is that, you know, in each lane, it would be good to have your sample completely in it. So like this lane right here, uh, if we click on that and we go to single lane and we go to width, we can click on that and then we can move that so that it's, and then just kind of move it over. Uh, move and then move it over and so see how now this band is completely in this red box same thing over here if you look at that or maybe what you just need to do is you need to adjust all of them and you need to do some kind of uh, movement and so you can see how uh, how all that works and so sometimes you just need to play with it but the idea is that you want all of your sample uh, each band to be in a lane like that is still not good so maybe if we just for example do the width of them maybe all of them need to be just a little bit wider and then uh, something like that okay so what I'm gonna do though is uh, because obviously we have more lanes on this you have eight for yours I'm gonna go ahead and and just do the automatic again it will delete those and then it just does it over great so it's easy to start over right so play with it enjoy it uh, and so then the bands you can also hit detect bands and so uh, there's low, high, custom. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, but basically, uh, if you just, I like the low sensitivity. If you hit detect and then X out of that, each one of these particular uh, uh, lines now is representing the particular band. And so I'm just scrolling in with my mouse so that I can kind of zoom in on it a little bit more. And so what we see then is that this is showing us the bands. Now what I don't see is I like I see these two bands, but it didn't label it. Not a problem. Just go over here to the left, click add, find it, hit, and hit. Okay? Now if you think there's it labeled a band that's really not a band, um, then you need to go ahead and like this over here. Like what's going on over here? Well, I'm just gonna delete these because I'm not sure. And this right here. This just ran funny. This is actually one band. It's not one band down here and another band. It's, it's a whole band by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and add a band right in the middle there. Okay. And so the dashed lines, 
you want the band to be completely within the dashed lines. Just like we want the band to be within this red box, we want the band to be within the dashed line. So we can click over here to the adjust, grab it, and then essentially uh, make it so that it brackets it. And so you can do that for all of these. These are all looking pretty good. This is, this is maybe another suspicious one, so I'm going to delete this over here. All right? And then go ahead and add right in the middle there. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that, bring it up. So do that to all of your bands. Um, and then uh, we'll be ready to move to the next step. And so uh, whenever you need to get the, to the uh, different options over here, it's this, this arrow right here. So click on that arrow. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do molecular weight analysis tools. And so by doing that, it's saying, OK, the standard that's loaded up is BioRed Precision Plus. That is uh, the protein markers that you used last semester. So let's change that. And the gene ruler one kilobase is not in here. So this is these are different DNA molecules. So you need to make your own. So hit new. Now I last year we used a different set of standards than you are right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this Edvotech 3. And then I'm going to change this to DNA, right? And you're going to have to do this as well. Uh, but instead of Edvotech here, you're going to want to name it uh, your actual, right, your, what you're doing. And you're going to be using this gene ruler one kilobase DNA ladder. So that's what you would put up there. And then you need to add what the, what the number of base pairs are for each of these standards. And so essentially what we're going to do then is uh, hit add. And so the highest base pair fragment of DNA I have in my standards that we used last year is 6751. Hit OK. Uh, I'm going to add another one, 3652. And I'm just going down on the line, and I'm adding all of the ladder markers. Okay, and then I just hit OK. And so I'll hit OK now. And so, so now that I've put those in, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and zoom out a little bit with my scroll. Over here on the left, so it says Edvotech 3. Yours would uh, have that different name. And uh, down here, uh, select standard lanes by checking the box below. So this is the standard right here, so click on that. And I'm going to say no to redetect because I'm happy with how they look. And so uh, if we look at this, uh, what we see is that this band up here is not being de being used. Instead, uh, it's doing something down here. So I have a feeling that one of these bands is incorrect. And so uh, let's go ahead and deal with that right now. So uh, we can go back. Let's uncheck that. Let's go back up to the lanes and bands. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, I wonder if we go back to the molecular weight analysis and we do this, let's redetect. Maybe maybe it's going to be smarter because I think there's an extra band in there. Nope, it's still it's still confused. <laughs> right? Because now it's not using these. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's just that um, it's it's calling this band up here the same band. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Lanes and, lanes and bands, and I'm going to delete all these in here. What's going on in there, right? And so, uh, okay, so I would agree. Yep, let's undo that. So I'm just going to do this manually. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there, 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 and there. And so uh, you'll need to go through and adjust like this one. You need to bring up higher, right? So make sure you do all that adjustment. And so now if I go back to the molecular weight analysis tool and I select this, I'm going to hit no. And so there we go. So now it's accurate. So basically, it thought that this was another band. So this is doing the same thing that this was doing and this was doing that I showed you. So you would need to get rid of that band. So it's the fattest bands. Yeah. And so, uh, so now that we have that, uh, we can look at, for example, the standard curve. And so the standard curve here is using, you can see down here, point to point. Uh, on the left, we also see point to point. And so this is, uh, you know, kind of going on uh, almost a straight line. Uh, if we change this to over here to linear, we see that it fit a linear line. 
and it's looking good with a really nice high R square value. Now this is on the y axis, so uh, that's unfortunate because you know with me and figures and scientists in general, we don't want this whole big area, um, but we do want the axis. But that's okay um, for the purpose of this. You don't need to re. Uh, plot anything. But let's look what it looks like if it is not a log axis, right? So there we go. Now we've got essentially showing that curved fit that you guys are a little bit more used to seeing sometimes, right? So if we go back to log axis, uh, your data should be a linear line when you do this log axis, when you're doing linear or when you're doing the point to point. Okay, it should look like a pretty straight line. So which one to use, right? So linear is nice, uh, it gives you the R squared value, but if you see, even though it's really good, it's still, the line is not going through some of them. So we can get a little bit more precision, excuse me, a little more accuracy by doing the point to point semi-log here. And it, now there's no equation because it is doing a kind of a semi-log in between each one and it's curving it, uh, it's fitting it, so there's not one. So this would be uh, a figure uh, for you. And so, uh, you know, if you just want to use the snipping tool or whatever, just go ahead and grab that. And you need this information below. And then you can either paste that into a Word document just by Control-V right now or uh, a PowerPoint. Uh, or you can file, save as, uh, and then import it that way. So that would be um, an important figure for you. So let's get rid of that. And so now uh, what we need to know is the analysis table. So the, we did all of that, of course, to figure out what the sizes of all of these fragments are, right? So uh, under analysis table, that's what we have. And so instead of looking at it through this software, we can just go ahead and export it right here. And here we have it. And so this is showing us the uh, the base pairs in lane one, and that makes sense because that is what we told it it is, right? And so then it's giving you the volume. Remember that, so the volume is, remember when you've got the dashed lines there, that's the volume of intensity of that DNA in there. And, and you guys did this and you looked at band percent and lane percent last semester with the lysozyme, right? And so then the question is, this band, this band, and this band, we can tell right away that this band has a lot more volume than these two and it's also higher uh, number of base pairs. So if we look at that, we see here is the base pairs for those three, right? If we just kind of maybe scrunch it down, this is what we're looking at. And if you look at the volume, you see that this is 91% of the intensity of this band, and these are three and 4%. And so uh, I don't think I'm gonna have you do anything with the quantitation of this right now, but you should be aware of that. So this is how you're gonna get all your numbers for what the sizes of the fragments are. And so uh, that's how you get that. And so what you've done now is, uh, so this right here, um, I think you can, uh, yep, you can file uh, export image for publication at 600 DPI, export. Um, I'm going to throw this on my desktop really top. I want to see what this looks like. And so uh, it'll be easy to find, uh, maybe. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Okay, yep, I just wanted to make sure that it had all of the, uh, the lines and everything, but it doesn't, you know, it's, it looks a little bit different. So uh, what you may want to do for this, I think what, what I would do, okay, what I would like you to do is go ahead and snip this for your image, right? And so that'll, that'll be clear that you've got essentially everything. And that right there is a nice figure. So also, so you've got this, uh, you've got your standard curve. Uh, the other figure that I want is when you've got essentially none of, uh, none of this going on. So how can I get rid of all of that? So I'd like there to be no annotations on this. So frankly, what I may have to do is just get rid of this image, right? And then just open it back up. And then go to the image tools, right? Crop that so it's a nice, tight figure. Right click, crop, um, and then before I uh, export it or or just to, you know for this for images, this the snapshot works well, the the snippet. Uh, but this is one thing where you may just want to go ahead and check again, make sure you can see it all. So I think I think by and large, again the automatic works pretty well. So, uh, so this would be an image, and then the one with all the annotations that we just did that screen capture of would be one, and your standard curve. And so that, oh, the other thing I needed to mention is, so you, when you're making your, uh, your,
and see you can actually do it all in one step as well. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, so um, when you're when you're doing this right, and you're and you're doing new right. So I put all of let's see, I put all of these in here. But what you're going to do, of course, is you are going to put in these values, right? This is what you're using. So instead of these numbers over here, you're going to be using these numbers because that's what you've got. And that ends the tutorial.